Today we will see how to easily define a target sound. We will use the sound of a turbo. You will hear there is an unacceptable widening in this turbo sound. Our goals here will be to find why this sound is not acceptable and how to improve it. So first let's open the file. You can just drag and drop the file. Once open, you can use the playback control window to listen to it or press the spacebar. Listen to it carefully. Now you probably heard the annoying whining coming from the turbo sound. To know where the whining is, let's analyze the spectrum of the sound. Right click on the sound file and click on Calculate Spectrum. Now you have the spectrum of your sound. Switch from linear to logarithmic scale. Switch from dBSPL to dBA. Using right click, waiting. And now you have the spectrum displayed in dBA. To find the maximum of the spectrum, go to the left panel and select the automatic maximum detection. Now you know the highest level of the spectrum is around 570 Hz at 62 dBA. We now have found a rough estimation of the frequency band where the whining is supposed to be, but nothing precise yet. Beyond this maximum, we can notice a lot of other peaks in the spectrum. It is hard to know how important they are in the perception or annoyance of the sound. Indeed, just from the spectrum, how to guess what a whining exactly is, it is not easy to work on sound annoyance only by looking at sound in the spectrum. You need to listen to it. To investigate further, let's calculate the color map of the sound. Right-click and select Calculate Time Frequency Representation. Zoom in frequency, go on the bottom right of the window and click to zoom. You can see two high energy sound components, one low and one high in frequency. The resolution of the current color map is not clear. The current calculation settings of the color map uses 1024 point FFT size. Let's modify it automatically using the Adjust Window Size feature. Circle the part of the color map you are interested in. The color map resolution is automatically adjusted. As a result, you now have the most optimized FFT window size to see what you want to see. Select the lower sound component, which is the loudest one on the color map. Use the magic wand, as in Photoshop, to select it. Widen the selection and right-click in the color map and click on Isolate Selected Area. You can now listen to the original sound by clicking Play O or listen to what you see by clicking on Play S. We now have validated by hearing that the lower component is part of the whining. Transfer what you have selected graphically in a classical sound file to use it later. Rename the sound file using the left panel. Click on a wheel, change the sound file name. To be able to apply this graphical selection to other signals, for example, other microphone positions, accelerometers, save the graphical selection. You can do this by going to File, Save Selection. Please note that by doing so, you saved a graphical pattern, but not a sound. Repeat the exact same process with the second component. Press Ctrl Z to go back to your previous color map view. Select the magic wand feature and click on the component. Some unwanted part of the signal are selected. It's not a problem, let's delete it. Click on minus. Select the freehand selection feature. 
Circle the parts that you want to remove. Repeat it until the selection is totally clean. Reselect the part that you have removed by error using the magic mode feature once again. Okay, here we are. Right click, isolate the selected area and listen to the sound. Transfer what you have selected graphically in a classical sound file to use it later. Rename the sound file using the left panel. Click on the wheel, change the sound file name. Now let's have a sound without these two components. Press Ctrl Z to go back to your previous color map view. Load the graphical pattern you saved and join it to the current selection. Delete the global selection. You end up with a sound without the two components. Same story, transfer what you have selected graphically in a classical sound file to use it later. We now have isolated three sound components, two whistling plus the background. We are going to mix them and analyze and modify the contribution of each sound component. Open the mix table from the tools menu. Click on the wheel to load the three components. One channel is created for each sound. This button is used to play the sound mix in loop or straightforward. Play the sound mix and adjust the level of each channel as you want by using the cursors. Let's create a different configuration by setting precisely the level of each channel. What if we have minus 3 dB on the first whining and minus 6 dB on the second one? And save the sound. Name it config1. Let's try another configuration. Why not with minus 6 dB on the first winding and minus 3 dB on the second one? Save and name it config2. You can try as many configurations as you want, for instance, with minus 4 dB on winding 1 and minus 8 on winding 2, etc. etc. There is no limit. Then, your colleagues, managers or customers will be able to listen and evaluate all configurations you have created. Together, you will be able to define the best sound thanks to this process. Here, the target sound happens to be config 8, corresponding to a certain gain on winding 1 and 2. This process allows you to define vibroacoustic specifications, taking into account human perception.